So I've been a programmer for a little over two years now. For context, I worked for a big company in London as a software engineer before leaving that job to build my own projects and now co-founding a real tech startup. But if I were to be smacked in the head by a wrecking ball and I lost all my knowledge about programming, I would actually do a couple of things very, very differently. So I decided to make this video to tell you exactly what I would do if I was starting over from scratch because I imagine that a lot of you watching this video are in that situation right now and you have all these questions. Where do I start? What should I focus on? You an answer to all of this but it might not be the answer that you expect. So to understand exactly what I would do, I think we first need to understand what I did do. So we'll talk about that first. And we'll also talk about the one massive problem with what I did and why you should probably not copy me. And after all of that, I will give you my conclusion. And as part of this video, we'll also learn about trends. I promise this will all makes sense. But before we go there, I imagine that a lot of you watching this video are perhaps looking to change your careers into tech and this is exactly what I did so I know how tough it can be. One absolutely excellent way for you to change your career is through Career Foundry's full stack development program that is especially designed for career changes like you to take you from zero to job ready in as little as five months. The program is made out of three parts. An intro to front end development which culminates in creating your own portfolio website, a full stack immersion which is a seven month long deep dive into programming and a full stack specialization where you will specialize in Python development. Out of the more than 5,000 people who have completed Career Foundry's programs, they've seen some amazing career changings from Uber drivers who have become web developers, cabin crew transitioned into data analysts and much much more. And they also offer a job guarantee within six months of graduation or they will refund 100% of your tuition. You will receive coaching from their career services team to ensure you stand out in interviews and build an impressive portfolio out of real world projects. You can check out the links in the description where you can try out the free web development short course, speak to your own program advisor or start the full program with a 10% discount. Thank you for Career Foundry for making this video possible and now let's get back to our story. So I started learning to code when a couple of years ago I basically realized that the career path that I was on at that time was not the right one for me and for various reasons I decided that I wanted to become a self-taught software engineer. I started off learning to code by mastering the basics of what I thought to be the best beginner programming language which is Python. I ventured into areas such as web development and I started building out my first ever programming project and this whole period of my life is probably some of the most exciting time of my life. I was learning this new exciting skill. I was going towards this new career that I was finally excited about and I just I loved waking up every morning and just thinking about the next thing I was going to learn that day and I absolutely loved it. After lots of twists and turns which we won't get into here because I've already talked about this in these videos, I managed to land my first ever full-time job as a software engineer and I was absolutely ecstatic. So I had made it, right? Not quite. Because after I had done my job for a couple of months, I realized that I had made a massive mistake with what I was doing. I realized that the specific job and the company I was at was not right for me at all. Like I didn't find the environment exciting. And I just came to the realization that I had gone for this path of becoming an employee at a big company, not because that is really what excited me, not because I felt like this was what's going to give me fulfillment, but because that's what other people define as success. So again, long story short, which you can hear more about in this video, I quit my job to build my own project, my own startup, because at this time, this YouTube channel was also succeeding. So I figured I can live off this YouTube channel while I can actually work on the things that I want to work. So what was the big mistake? Is it the fact that I realized that corporate jobs are soul sucking and that you should not work a job, you should start your own business? is actually not. It's actually something slightly different and it will tie in to my conclusion as to what you should actually do. Before we talk about that, there's also another thing that we need to understand. Okay, so there's broadly four types of programming careers. So first, the traditional nine to five, big company, stable job path. Obviously, there's a lot of pros with this path, even though that wasn't the thing that I ended up enjoying the most. You have a lot of stability. The pay in the beginning is gonna be a lot higher compared to working for smaller companies because they just have a lot more money. And the work-life balance and just how chill the job is, is generally better compared to working for smaller companies or especially founding your own. But the downside is that the long-term potential is 
much lower, but it's more stable and more certain. So like it depends on what you're optimizing for. And for certain people like me, the corporate environment might be a bit soul sucking. But then again, for many people, it might be the right environment. So everything depends on you and your personality. So what does it take to get into this career path? Well, the bigger the company, the more they will probably emphasize your degree, the sort of prestige of your previous internships and things like this. And specifically for the interviews on like, how do you specifically get a job at these big companies? It's gonna be a lot of lead code grind because it's these companies that usually test like these data structure and algorithm types of questions. And it's less about what you specifically know now and more about what type of person you are and what is your potential because these big companies, they have the resources to train you. So what about startups and smaller companies then? Well, the pros are that you generally learn a lot more because you are actually working a lot more and you have a lot more responsibility and you're a lot more involved in the entire process. The environment is probably gonna be more dynamic, which might be a pro or a con, again, depending on your personality. And long term, the potential is to earn a lot more, especially if you get equity in the company and the company ends up doing well, you could do really, really well for yourself. But of course, if the company goes bust, which is a lot more likely than with big companies, then you might end up with nothing. In terms of what it takes to work for a startup, well, as a startup, when you're joining this very small company that doesn't have a lot of resources, they're going to have much bigger expectations of you from the get-go because you're actually gonna have large responsibilities, which is great for the learning, but it's gonna be more intense. And so they're gonna emphasize practically what can you do now for the specific languages and frameworks that the use of the company is going to be critical. And something like how much you know about computer science or data structure and algorithms is gonna be a lot less important. What about freelancing? Now, freelancing is interesting. One of my coaching clients is currently a freelancer. And the more we talk about this and the more I think about this, the more I realize that freelancing is actually a lot more interesting path than the full-time job path in many ways. Because the pros of freelancing are actually pretty great. You get much higher pay because it's easier for the companies to hire a freelancing rather than a full-time employee. You also get a lot more flexibility that you can just switch clients much more easily than switching jobs as well as you can often have a location independence and what it takes is pretty similar to startups to be fair because as a freelancer you're going in to do a specific job so your portfolio and your projects are going to be highly highly emphasized and lastly let's talk about founding your own company well this obviously has the largest long-term potential because if your company does well and you're a co-founder then well you can make a lot of money and again depending on your personality this is a pro or a con but for me it's a massive pro of not having to work for someone else but this is something that is not for the faint-hearted because it takes first of all the right idea it takes a massive amount of perseverance because in the beginning you are working for little or no money and no guarantee of future success and you're probably working much harder than in any of the other paths and it's just ridiculously difficult to found a successful tech startup which is exactly why i'm excited about it i'm weird okay but it's not for most people. Okay, so bringing this all together, what is the real point of me just listing out all of the different career paths? And how does this tie in to the massive mistake that I alluded to before with what I did when I was learning code? Well, the best way to explain this is using trains. So when I'm in London, I often take trains from this train station called St. Pancras International. The thing with this train station is that it goes into all kinds of places. I could take a train and go four hours up to Manchester, but I can also take a train south across the English Channel all the way to Paris. And these two trains, one going to Manchester and one going to Paris, are sort of like the two career paths of a programmer where one is going towards building your own startup and one is going towards a nine to five job. The two career paths require completely different things and completely different focus and most importantly a completely different personality. The massive mistake that I made in the beginning was that it was as if I was at the train station and rather than stopping to think where am I even trying to go, which train should I even get on, I just sort of randomly got on a train that was going somewhere far because I was just like well as long as the train is going far I'm going to do well and so it wasn't until I was already on the train to Manchester that I realized that well shit why the hell am I going to Manchester it's a shithole by the way I ended up just like 
getting on one train, realizing that this wasn't the right one, getting off, then hopping on another one to go in this direction, and then going a bit into this direction, before I finally actually stopped like, right, let me just choose the correct train and put all my energy into just getting on a freaking bullet train towards that one destination. And that, for me, was the moment when I realized that as hard as I was going towards the goal of becoming a great corporate employee, software engineer, it was taking me in the completely wrong direction. But again, the point of this is not to say, oh, F corporate jobs, you should all like found your own startups because honestly, for most people, Manchester is the right destination. The corporate stable career is the right destination. So the point of this is that you should just stop the thing. Like, where are you actually trying to take your career? What are your goals? What excites you? What is the reason why you learned to code in the first place? And what is the kind of life you want to build for yourself? Because you don't want to be stuck on the wrong train. So I guess at the end of the day, try to choose the best option for you, given the information that you have and given what you believe your goals to be. But if they change, also, don't be afraid to get off the train and get on a different one. So as much as the point of this video is for you to stop and think and realize that different programming careers require different focus and require different things from you as a different type of person, you really can't make the perfect decision ever. So just make the best decision you can, go towards that direction, and if you realize that it's wrong, then just try again. But the real point here is just to keep your why in mind and if you update, then you should update your direction and your focus. Okay, so whichever one of these programming careers you focus on, there is one thing that is certain. It's not gonna be easy. And there's actually three things that I learned in my own journey that had I just known them beforehand would allow me to save so much time and make the entire process so much easier. And I talk about what these three things are in this video right here. So alongside this video, I highly recommend you watch this video because whichever path and whichever why you choose, these three things are gonna make your life so much easier. So I highly recommend you watch this video next.